Now the next component we want to create is an input component. So for that, we'll go to our components directory once again and create a directory for inputs. And under the input, we'll call our first file style text input. Now once again, to start this off, we copy the content of the main container and paste it here. We start by changing the name from main container to style text input. Now the next thing we want to work on is the types we have over here. This component will need some types as well. So we create a types file under input. And then once again, we can copy the types from the main container and then we paste it here. Now for the types for the input field, we want to do something a bit different. This is because we are in a situation whereby the input field can accept a ton of valid properties and that will be a problem to list all of them. So to do that, we import one property from React Native which will cover all the properties for the input field. Now what you are going to do is that we we'll make use of the text input props in addition to some few extra properties that we will accept which are not native to the input field. So for those properties, we will call them extra input props. Now the first extra input prop will be a label property and for this, we can expect it to be a React node. The label here will be a small text to inform the user what exactly the input field is about. Next, we want to accept an icon. And this will refer to the name of a particular icon from an icon pack that we will use from Expo Vector Icons. This can also be accessed from React Native Vector Icons if you are not using Expo. So in this particular work, we will be using the Material Community Icons. Actually, if you are not on Expo, you can still install this package and then have access to all the icons. Now to be able to extract the type that we want, we need to bring in the component props from React and then we pass this to the icon. Now we make use of the angle bracket here and then we call the type of operator and then we pass it to the material community icons. Now this right here will return all the types for all the properties for material community icons. But in this case, we just want the name of the icon. Now from this file, the actual type we want to export will be called the input props. But for this case, because of the conjunction, we can't use the interface for that. But we need to use the type construct. And for this, we'll start with the text input props. And then to perform the conjunction, we'll make use of one ampersand. And then we can pass the extra input props. Now this is what we need to export. So we can cut the export statement over here, and then paste it before the type. Now we can get rid of the unused properties here. And then we are good for now. Now we can go back to the style text input and import this. So over here, instead of container props, we import input props. And then we can copy this and replace the container props here with input props. Now in this file, the next thing we want to do is that we want to create a wrapper for the input component. So above the style view here, we'll create a wrapper and call it input wrapper. This will be based on the view as well. All we'll do is to set the width to 100%. And then inside the style text input component, we'll just clear everything and just return this input wrapper. We want to start work on our left icon. So for that, we'll create a component for it, which will properly position the icon at where we want it. The first property we want to pass this is a position. And we want to position this to be absolute. And then we want to give this a position from the top of 35 pixels. And also from the left, we want to position it to be 15 pixels. Now to keep this always at the top, we want to set the Z index value to 1. And then I want to have a border at the right side of this. So I'll set the border right width to 2 pixels. And for that border, I'll set the color to the secondary color. This color is not imported yet, so we can copy the name and then import it. Now after the border color, we want to give it some padding at the right of the icon. Now by way of using this left icon, we'll put the component in the input wrapper. Now inside the left icon here will be our material community icon. So I'll import material community icon. Now I can copy the name of the icon pack and then paste it here. Now this icon pack will expect a name which we receive from the properties. Also it will expect a size and we'll give it a value of 30. And also it will expect a color and we'll set it to our ascent color. This is not imported yet so you have to add it to our imports. And then for the icon here we need to destructure it from the props. And then for the props we spread it. Now for the label that we talked about, we'll make use of a small text. So let's import the small text component. And now just below the left icon, we want to use the small text. For the value, it will be the label property from the props. So we can destructure it here. Now before we move any further, let's go to our app file and import our star text input. Now we want to create a scenario where we need the text input property. So let's say we have an email input field. So for that, we need a state to monitor the value. 
Now in the app function, we'll create a state for the email. Now just below the small text, we can use our style text input. Now we start by adding our expected extra properties. So first, we add a label. And for this, the value will be email address. Also, we need an icon. And for this, we can pass the email variant icon. If you're wondering about the set of values that you can use for this, you can open your browser and then search for Expo Vector icons. We open the link and you'll be presented with a directory for the details about all the icons available. So for instance, you can go to filter and then choose the material community icons that we are using here to see all the icons that are possible. Now let's pass some more regular test input properties. So the first one is a value. So for the value, we'll pass it the email state. Now also, we need to pass an unchained text property. And for the value, we'll pass it the set email function. Next, we want to give it a placeholder. And for the value, we'll put a random email address. This is currently not displayed yet, but as we progress, it will be displayed. Now because this input field is an email field, we can also pass the keyboard type. And for this, the value will be email address. Now before we go back to the style text input file and proceed, let's tell the text here to give us some breathing space. So we'll give it a margin at the bottom of 20. Also we can do the same for this guy. So this will ensure that when you put something below the text input, we have some space between them. Now let's go back to the style text input. Now we want to shift focus to the input field itself. So we'll create a styled component and we'll call it input field. Now to see our properties at work, let's go below the small text and put the input field. Now we can also spread the props on it and we should see the placeholder value already. Now back to the styling, we'll first give it a background color of primary. Next, we want to give it a height of 60 pixels and then we want to give it a border width of 2 pixels. Next, we want to give it a border radius of 10 pixels and then we want to change the border color to the secondary color. Now to push the label here up a bit, we give it a margin vertical of 3 pixels. But at the bottom, we need some more margin, so we set margin bottom to 10 pixels. Also, we want to give the input field some padding to position the content. So first, we give it a general padding of 15 pixels. Next, we we'll give it a padding at the left of 65 pixels. This will ensure that the text content will get out of the way of the icon. Now when we get to the password field, we'll have some icon at the right here. So because of that, we want to set the padding at the right to 55 pixels. Now for the text in the input field, we want to change the font size to 16 pixels. And for the color of the text, when you actually input some data, we want to set it to black. The black color is not here yet, so we copy the name and then add it to our colors input. Now for the placeholder text that we have over here, we want to set the color to the gray color through the placeholder text color property. Now for the input field component, when we receive a style property, we want to pass it to it. Now at this point, when we select the input field and we type some data, we see that the data is displayed, but there is nothing that shows that this is the current input field which is accepting data. So the next thing we want to do is implement some form of highlighting for the input field. 